Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So, slight change of venue, you'll see this is simply because I need a little bit more space to illustrate the point that I want to make. So, obviously I recently uploaded a video concerning dagger fighting and the difference, or some of the differences between point up uh, grip and point down grip. Um, and one point that kind of came up in the comments that I thought was worth addressing is the kind of balance, as it were, or um, kind of paradox that we get between power, thrusting power, which can be important uh, for a number of reasons, I'll talk about those in a second, thrusting power uh, in contrast with thrusting reach. Now very clearly we all agree if someone's holding the uh, sabre grip, let's call this sabre grip, I sometimes call it sword grip but a lot of people out there seem to call it sabre grip so I'm happy to go with the majority here. So if we call this sabre grip, very clearly I have a longer reach with the sabre grip than I do with the pickaxe grip. However, is it that much longer, really? So what I'm going to do here is, we've got the edge of the screen, I'm moving so that I can reach just about to the edge of the screen with my point there. This is the ice pick grip, boom, I can reach that far with an ice pick grip. Now let's turn the blade around, oh, yep, yeah, there we go, I can reach a little bit further. It's not very much though, it's actually only at most about six inches. Now six inches, you might go, six inches can make a big difference uh, in the world. But in terms of the length of my arm, my arm, I don't even, I haven't measured my arm, I have to be honest, but I'm guessing it's about 30 inches long. So actually six inches on top of 30 inches is not that much. However, yes, it is something worth mentioning. And generally speaking, if you want a slight reach advantage, a mere six inches, which to me is not very much at all, um, then very clearly, if you want a slight reach advantage, you're better with the sabre grip than you are with the ice pick grip. However, we also sometimes want power. And something that people often uh, say in comments or you know, even in forum discussions talking about knife fighting and dagger fighting, is that uh, they kind of agree more or less that generally speaking the, uh, the ice pick kind of grip has generally speaking more power for downward stabs. I would also argue for the um, cut it is I think of it because I'm mostly a swords person um, from across the body here. So I kind of think of the ice pick grip as being very powerful anywhere across here, down here, down here and all the way to about there. So this 90 degrees I think is really, really powerful. And some people point out that yes, the thrust upwards, if you're holding it in the sabre grip, upwards into the guts or perhaps into the ribs or possibly even the armpit in some cases, this can be very powerful as well. Yes, it can be quite powerful. Um, if we're literally talking about penetrating uh, resistive materials, let's say for example a padded jack. Now what is a jack? The jack is made of many layers of linen, sometimes with padded material in there as well. So actually stabbing through a jack, I mean jacks have been shown to be able to prevent the penetration of longbow arrows shot from heavy war bows with 120, 140 pound draw weight. So if they can stop a, a longbow arrow of that kind of power, <coughs> it's got a fairly good chance of stopping a dagger in most situations. However, if we're trying to get through this type of padded garment, even if it's just a padded doublet and we want to ensure that our stab gets through, yes, this can be quite uh, powerful from underneath and possibly have slightly longer reach at its termination than the ice pick grip. However, think about something. Often when people talk about the reach of the sabre grip as opposed to the ice pick grip, they often kind of use this stance as an illustration point and they go, look, they're lunging like with a sword. But the point is, if I just do this, this doesn't have very much power. To actually get enough power into the sabre grip to penetrate something quite resistive or padded, I actually need to bring it back quite a long way. And as soon as I bring it back quite a long way, I've no longer really got the reach advantage, have I? Yes, at its termination, it might reach a few inches more potentially than the ice pick grip, but you still have to start at the same place. Whether I'm stabbing downwards from the ice, ice pick grip, look, I start near my shoulder. Shoulder distance here, I have to reach from here to here to get enough power to penetrate the target. It's exactly the same thing if I'm in the sabre grip. I still have to start from here 
to power it to that termination point. So when people talk about reach and the reach difference between the ice pick grip and the sabre grip, what they forget is that if you're dealing with padded garments and penetration power being an important factor, the starting points for each of these are actually the same distance from the opponent. So there we go, something to think about. Um, various points about penetration power, distance, and uh, these two grips that are commonly seen and used with the dagger and the knife. Cheers guys!